This is EDUC 4703U, Teaching and Learning, Problem-Based Learning. The title of this video clip is Collaborative Online Learning Environment, Coal, Part 1. The analysis questions for this video clip are as follows. Number one, what was the intent behind the building of coal? Number two, describe the types of interactions that would occur between the user and the computer. How would you know when this type of activity is occurring? Number three, what role do the incorporated tasks play when learners are working within the coal environment? And number four, describe the role of the facilitator within the coal environment. This video clip essentially describes a alternative learning environment that was created by my colleague Francois Desjardins and myself in 2007-2008. Much of the information provided in this video clip is based on two papers, Desjardins and Van Oostveen 2008-A, Desjardins and Van Oostveen 2008-B. Both of these are, um, the full references for these papers will be given in the theory portion of this video clip. My colleagues and I wanted to explore the conception of an alternative learning and management system as the LMSs that we had been exposed to previously seemed to be primarily an extension of the traditional teacher-driven content-focused paradigm. The concept of learning environment was selected to reflect the notion that the learner would drive the process and the activities and therefore they needed a space and the resources required to accomplish the tasks. To create this environment for an online context, the open source Moodle platform was chosen to produce the prototype that would include a workspace for the learner as well as a specific set of tools or plugins carefully selected to not only facilitate the task but also to foster certain activities such as negotiation of meanings and co-construction of knowledge. This also meant that many tools are specifically excluded as they will either not foster collaboration or could promote a content-centered approach and we wanted to um, avoid the content-centered approach and very much foster or promote the collaboration. With a computer-based learning environment, the interface design has to take into account not only issues of functionality, but most importantly, the design has to address issues of human-computer, human interaction. Using the simple model set out by Desjardins, Lacasse, and Belair, 2001 and Desjardins 2005, see session 1 video clip 3 for further reference to this model. Four types of interactions can be identified allowing issues to be addressed and tools chosen for each. So you have the user computer interaction, user technological object interaction, the interacting with others, so the user through the technological object to the other users, Interacting with information, so the user interacting with the technological object to interact with other information, declarative knowledge portion that's shown on the screen, and then finally the fourth, using information processing tools, so the user interacting with the technological object, assigning process, and using the computer programs, essentially software, as cognitive tools, so creating procedural knowledge. The student, teacher, or user initially comes into contact with a browser-based interface that should be as simple as possible. The idea employed in this case was simply that if too much time is required to learn how to navigate the interface, it is too complicated. This interface, if it is to provide the supports appropriate to the learning environment, it must first and foremost be a workspace. The workspace should be available at all times, and around this workspace are the tools and resources grouped under communication tools, information access and management tools, information production and processing tools, and time management tools. And you can see that arrangement uh, shown on the screen in this mock-up of the coal environment. Coal is merely intended to provide a framework with a specific set of parameters within which the learners can work. 
It is also a set of possibilities and limits by which the instructor or facilitator has to abide by. For learning to successfully occur, all participants must not only respect these parameters, but also, and most importantly, use them to act, actually collaborate in problem solving and collective knowledge building tasks. In the first iterations of the COAL, used for the teacher professional development, a set of tasks or problems were designed to take the learners from clearly stating their prior conceptions regarding a specific subject to collectively constructing and negotiating a model or theory allowing the solution of a problem. In this particular instance, the task started with each individual creating a concept map of what was personally known about a specific subject or theme. The individual was then asked to define, to the best of his or her ability, each term in the concept map. And following this, video excerpts of examples or cases are viewed and the user is asked to analyze the presented situations and context through a set of questions. After reviewing the initial concept maps and definitions in the light of the reflections on the video cases, the learner embarks in the collaborative activity. Individual concept maps are shared and discussed in order to produce a collective concept map and to take the definitions to the wiki which is also embedded within the COAL environment, for a first set of negotiated definitions. These have to, have, have to be discussed until agreed upon for a single collective vocabulary. In this, it is in this exchange that conjectures are presented by the individuals and discussions produced, refutations, and eventually revised more powerful versions of these ideas. Each of the video cases, which are also embedded into the coal environment, was prepared with a similar structure, presenting first a realistic, albeit contrived, context or situation. The viewer is then invited to analyze the situation with a set of questions. These are intended to lead the learner to make closer observations in an attempt to identify certain elements of the situation presented. Secondly, more background information is then provided or simply made available to the learner. The third step involves another set of questions being submitted to the learners with the objective to lead them to synthesize, to make decisions as to what they should, would change, for example, if they weren't in, in that situation, or in other cases, simply what they would do with this problem. The video cases are an example of the types of approach that can bring realism to the task or to the problem, thus contributing to making the learning situation as relevant as possible. The video cases used in this case were predecessors to the PBLOs described earlier, but had many similar characteristics. In this alternative learning environment, the role of the instructor or facilitator is to be an active participant, but not to act as an expert providing all the answers. The environment, designed to be learner-driven, requires the facilitator to act or participate carefully. The tasks or problems as presented to the students are not only designed by the facilitator, but are designed in a manner to foster activity in the discussions among the group of learners in the general direction that would lead them to construct knowledge and develop the desired competencies. That's taken from 2000, um, Van Oostveen, 2005. The problem is posed in the recognition of the cognitive space between the potential of the learner to carry out activities based on the knowledge and skills he or she already possesses and the activities that potentially could lead to the construction and development of the desired skills and knowledge. As long as the learners are within this space and progressing towards the goal, the facilitator should not intervene. It is only when the activity is veering outside of the boundaries of the intersecting space between the potential and the required that gentle actions are required on the part of the facilitator. And the reference there is to Desjardins 2001. This requires the facilitator to remain in close and continuous contact with what is happening within the learning environment and to act only when required and even then not by providing answers but rather by asking questions that will bring awareness of the potential problems. Portions of the theoretical framework are provided by the two articles that I um, identified earlier. 
Desjardins and Van Oostveen, 2008, a collaborative online learning environment towards a process-driven approach and collective knowledge building. And Desjardins, Van Oostveen, 2008b, implementing PBL online as a collaborative learning strategy for teachers, the COAL. And both of these, the references um, as well as the URLs will be given in the WebCT environment. So to wrap up this video clip, the synthesis questions for this video clip are as follows. Why might COAL be referred to as a learning support environment rather than a learning management system? Number two, note that the tasks are high level. That is, they require a specific structure. In other words, create a concept map or define a term, but they allow the learner to specify the content. How is this reflective of constructivist learning theory? Number three, why is it important that the scenario or context described in the video cases is realistic? How will the learners go about identifying the problems that are implicit in the video cases? And number four, how is the role of the facilitator, as described in the video clip, complementary to the role of the assistive other, as described in Vygotsky's theory of socio-constructivism?